Welcome to our Kol Nidre service. You can follow along in the PDF prayer book. Lashana Tova from your Orami president, Lori Weinberg. Hamlet said, time is out of joint. That couldn't ring more true than it has this year. We typically measure a year with seasons, milestones, rituals, and events, which have all been upended during this pandemic. No one knows what 2021 will bring, but hope will help us endure the pandemic and even thrive. We have all had to look at our present circumstances and try to establish new normals. Most of us have done that as we plan for the betterment of our current situation. At a virtual ONEG recently, someone raised the question, what are some of the positive things that have come from this pandemic for you? Jan said she had been spending more time in nature, taking walks and absorbing the beauty of her surroundings. This echoes what I've heard from others who have said that the skies have been so blue and there are so many more birds singing. Nature has been popping up all around. Maybe we're just taking time to notice the things that our pre-COVID selves didn't take the time to do. Of course, we are all spending more time with family, but Adrian mentioned that she has connected with people she hasn't seen in a long time, and she has done so more frequently. She has even reconnected with a high school friend she had lost touch with over the years. And while our children may be getting tired of spending so much time with their parents and siblings and vice versa, People have reported that all of this time together has helped them get to know each other in more meaningful ways. Someone else said that they were spending more time cooking and trying new recipes that had, they hadn't taken the time to do before. People have started gardens and growing food. I've learned that we have a lot of bread baking men here among us at Orami. Joel Moses may be stiff, facing some stiff competition soon in the Hala baking department. People will always find ways to discover something new and good, even in clearly less than ideal circumstances. It's the human spirit and it's the aura me way. We are grateful for all financial support we receive at aura me. This includes commitments made under our life and legacy program. As we start a new and unusual year, I would like to ask for your continued financial support. We love the tradition of opening our doors to everyone to celebrate the High Holy Days, and even doing this virtually comes at a cost. We look forward to the time when we can all gather together again in person, but even during these virtual services, remember the feeling you have in your heart as we share the cold Nidre prayer this evening. If you are able, I hope that you will consider continuing to make a commitment to the Jewish people and to our Orami community. For those who can, we hope that you will consider making a donation to our High Holy Day Fund. We welcome monetary pledges of all sizes. To donate online, simply go to orami.com. Click the tab that says giving and follow the links that are provided there. If you prefer to send a check, mail it directly to Congregation Orami. Yom Kippur services will begin at 1030 tomorrow morning. There will be Jewish meditation via Zoom at three o'clock and a family service at four. Afternoon Yitzker will begin at five. A Zoom break the fast will follow the concluding service. Links and details can be found on the ORME website. When will everyone be able to go back to school safely? Will there be a return this year to large wedding celebrations or B'nai Mitzvah? When will football and basketball games resume in front of crowds? When will we be able to return to movie theaters and restaurants without strict social distancing? There are no clear answers, but there is hope. In closing, I return once more to the Emily Dickinson poem, Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Let us all tap into the burden side of ourselves that never stops singing its tune. As long as we have hope, the song will never end. Lashana Tova. Let the bright images of countless candle lightings stream through the open windows of our minds. Together and apart, we share familiar sights and sounds. Suspend time and let our feelings be without fight or struggle. This is the moment, and if we try, we may find relief 
from the constant flow of our ever active minds. The light of these candles shines for us. The flames reflect the hope in our hearts. May these candles light our way in the years to come. Kirishanu be mitvotaham, meti hivahanu, lehadli hikner, lehadli hikner, shel yom ha kipurim. Baruch atandonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Shehechianu vekiemanu, Mehigianu lazman haze. Amen. For rash words, broken pledges, and foolish promises, may we find forgiveness. For transgressions of one human being against another, we are not granted atonement until we have made peace with one another. We ask that our vows and oaths, the promises we make and the obligations we incur to you, O God, between this Yom Kippur and the next be null and void, should we, after great effort, find ourselves unable to fulfill them. Then may we be absolved of them. Our rabbis taught that 613 commandments were given to Moses. Micah reduced them to three mitzvot. Do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Justice is more than maintaining law. Justice without mercy is cruelty. Mercy is more than granting pardon. Mercy without humility is pretense. Humility is more than not being proud or arrogant. Humility is using oneself for the benefit of others. We gather tonight 10 days into the new year. It is Yom Kippur. We come to pray, to turn inward, and to reevaluate our lives and our deeds. We come to confront ourselves in the courtroom of our souls. Let us turn our thoughts toward this day's place in tradition. Let us turn our thoughts toward our place in this world. What is our purpose in life? How shall we see this year a year hence? Kol Nidre, meaning all vows, has been recited on the eve of Yom Kippur for more than 1,000 years. Because of its great solemnity, Yom Kippur was chosen for the chanting of Kol Nidre. The recitation of the Kol Nidre gained intense significance when Jews were forced to publicly abandon their religion during the Inquisition in Spain and Portugal and only practiced it in secret. The stirring melody, which expresses fear, impassioned pleading, and hope for ultimate deliverance was composed in Germany in the early 16th century. Kol Nidre refers to vows made by an individual for himself alone, where no other person or interest is involved. The context of the Kol Nidre passage makes it clear that no vows or obligations towards others are implied. The law regarding vows is perfectly stated in the Torah. When you make any vow to the Lord your God, you must pay it without delay. You must be careful to keep any promise you have made with your own lips.
Yom Kippur is a day of searching and discovery, a day we welcome into our lives. Although feelings of remorse cast shadows, Yom Kippur is a time of knowledge and light. In discovery, the shadows flee, and the valleys of darkness fill with light. As the Torah teaches, so we have been taught. And this shall be to you a law for all time. In the seventh month, on the 10th day of the month, you shall practice self-denial, and you shall do no manner of work, neither the citizen nor the alien who resides among you. For the, on this day, atonement shall be made for you to cleanse you of all sins. From all your sins shall you be clean before the Lord. Life, Life is, is full of troubles, troubles but, but we, we are, are here. here. We, we know pain and, and failure, failure, yet we, we are, are here. here. A, a kind word and a gentle, gentle embrace bring, bring hope. We, we have come tonight to be forgiven and to forgive. We have come to forgive ourselves and to forgive others. We do not want to dwell upon bitterness drawn from anger. We want to bring peace into the depths of our souls. This is Yom Kippur. The Mishnah says, we were taught that whoever destroys one soul is regarded by the Torah 
as if destroyed a whole world. And whoever saves one's soul is regarded as if one saved an entire world. As evening casts its shadows over the earth, ushering in the most solemn day of the year, our thoughts join with those of other Jews throughout the world. We put aside petty concerns and vain desires. We ask, what is the meaning of our lives and why do we sometimes fail? On, On this cold, cold midway night, night sanctified, sanctified in the memories of our people, we stand, we stand united, united with, with generations, generations past. We recall the lives of our ancestors. We are stripped of pretense and our weaknesses are revealed. We seek peace within ourselves and with other people. We are people in motion, choosing directions that take us toward others or away from others. We yearn for calm. The words of the Barafu tell us to praise God in our hearts and in our souls. We rise in person or in spirit to say the words that echo across the entire world. This is a holy day of reflection. This is a time of repentance, but repentance must be more than remorse for wrongdoing. Repentance must include confession, restitution, and change. It is our choice. We yearn to undo the wrongs we have done, either consciously or unconsciously. In our prayers, in our hopes, in our confessions, we are one with all Jews and all who seek to do your will. This is not our first Yom Kippur, nor our first resolve to repent. We come with hope in our hearts that we shall find forgiveness for our sins. We have been selfish when we should have been self-sacrificing, harsh when we should have been gentle, irritable when we should have been kind, thoughtless when we should have been considerate. Together, we have the opportunity to see that we are not alone with our hopes and doubts, our joys and sorrows. As we attempt to free ourselves from the conflicts and fears that affect us, we reach out to become one in fellowship. We yearn to correct faults and failings, to change bitter to sweet, to bring light where darkness resides, to acknowledge fault. We pray that we choose the right paths. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon me, God. God. In, in keeping with your compassion, blot out, out my transgressions. transgressions. Wash, Wash me of my iniquities and purify me of my sins. sins. I recognize my transgressions and am ever conscious of them. Against you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. You are just in your sentence and right in your judgment. Each moment lived in regret is a moment lost. The choice of participation or withdrawal, the choice of creation or destruction, these choices are ours. We choose life over death, creation over despair. We are blessed with the capacity to renew our lives. We are blessed with the gifts that allow this renewal. We give thanks to God for these gifts. For, for the, the gift, gift of freedom, freedom for, for the, the smiles of children, children for, for the, the help of friends, friends for, for the, the peace of Shabbat, Shabbat for the, the peace of Yom Kippur. Kippur. The Shema is a declaration of faith an affirmation of Judaism. Whether in moments of joy or despair, it is the historic proclamation of our central creed.
Ahavta, we are commanded to love God without restraint and to contemplate and remember our devotion and faith. While the Shema allows us to publicly declare our faith, the Ve'ahavta provides guidance on how to live our faith and how to make it real. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha v'chol avavcha v'chol nafshecha v'chol me'odecha v'hayu hadvarim ha'ele asher anochi You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. The path, the path to, to the love of God is through, through the love of others. I do not love God until I love my neighbor as myself. Set these words which I command you this day upon your heart. Jewish, Jewish faith unites heart and mind. Even as my mind seeks to understand life's meaning, so may my life show love for all created things. Teach them faithfully to your children. Speak of them in your home and on your way, when you lie down and when you rise up. We, we do not, not teach our children by words alone. alone. May, May I make my life and actions into good teachings, teachings for in my conduct, conduct I must exemplify Torah. Torah. Bind them as a sign upon your hand. Let them be a symbol before your eyes. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Let, Let my, my home glow with, with the beauty of our heritage. heritage. Let, Let my doors be opened wide to wisdom and to righteousness. Be mindful of all my mitzvot and do them. I am Adonai, your God, who took you out of Egypt to be your God. I am Adonai, your God. Sing a song of men and women joined in understanding and respect. A song of God's miracles, a gift for our children and generations to come. A song of a people once held captive, a song of a world redeemed, a song of freedom. with the Avot Ve'imahot, which summons the memory of those who went before us, linking our own standing before God to the spiritual lives of our parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, in a long line stretching back to Abraham and Sarah. Once this connection has been established, we recognize the divine power which we hope to emulate through acts of love and kindness, such as supporting the fallen, healing the sick, freeing the captive, and giving hope to those in despair. The Amidah includes a number of special insertions for Yom Kippur 
and concludes as usual with a prayer for peace. Just as the Baruch Hu and the Shema connect us with God and the Jewish people throughout the ages, the Avot Ve'imahot honors the relationship God formed with our parents and theirs going back to ancient times. We praise God as we remember the faithfulness of our forefathers and mothers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu, 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 forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, and grant us atonement. In these ways we diminish ourselves and harm others. Through fraud and falsehood, through dishonesty, however good the cause, through breach of trust, through gossip, through envy and the hatred it breeds, through denying others their freedom. For all our sins, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. In these ways, 
ways we diminish ourselves and harm others. By pretending emotions we do not feel, by using the sins of others to excuse our own, by denying our responsibility for our own misfortunes, by refusing to admit our share in the troubles of others, by condemning in our children the faults we tolerate in ourselves, by condemning in our parents the faults we tolerate in ourselves, by remembering the price of things and forgetting their value, by lying to gain advantage. For all our sins, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. In these ways, we diminish ourselves and harm others by using people as stepping stones for our own gain, by treating with arrogance those who can be broken, by seeking out those to whom we can feel superior, by erecting borders and finding them satisfying, by finding pleasure in violence and war, by remaining silent in the face of evil. For all our sins, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. <laughs> Avinu Malkeinu, remove us from disease, war, and famine. 
Avinu Malkinu, destroy the power of every oppressor and adversary. Avinu Malkinu, inscribe us in your book for a life of goodness. Avinu Malkinu, let this be a good year for us. Avinu Malkinu, be gracious and respond to us, for we have too few good deeds. Act toward us with justice tempered by love and bring us to salvation. poster that described the difference between various world religions in terms of a two-word phrase that I will politely translate as unpleasant stuff happens. Referencing the idea of reincarnation, the poster explained Hinduism with the statement, this unpleasant stuff has happened before. This poster described fundamentalist Christianity with the statement, if unpleasant stuff happens, it is the will of God. And alluding to our people's long history of suffering, this poster described Judaism with the question, why does this unpleasant stuff always happen to us? Indeed, any student of Jewish history knows that suffering has been a substantial part of the Jewish experience for thousands of years. Whether that suffering occurred as a result of a biblical plague, ancient exile, or modern genocide, it has greatly impacted Jewish practice, beliefs, and identity. As a teenager, I internalized the idea from teachers and older community members that to be a Jew was to know suffering. But as a young adult, I had an experience that caused a shift in my mindset. I was a college student teaching Jewish history to sixth graders at a synagogue in Los Angeles. We had just read a chapter of our textbook about the experience of Jews during the Spanish Inquisition. This was after reading chapters about numerous other traumatic times in Jewish history. One of my students closed his textbook and sighed. He looked up at me with his sweet brown eyes full of sadness and asked, doesn't anything good ever happen to the Jews? I knew this middle schooler was grappling with his sense of identity and most of the messages he had received about Jewish identity that year were related to suffering. Why in a free country would he choose to remain Jewish if being Jewish meant suffering? In that moment, I knew that I had a responsibility as a Jewish educator to show him and his classmates the joys of living a Jewish life in the present and in the future, and not focus so much on the sorrows of what it was to live a Jewish life in the past. But in the spirit of Yom Kippur, I have a confession. Perhaps as a Jewish educator, I have gone too far in the opposite direction. I may have focused too much on the joys of Jewish life and been too reluctant to talk about the sorrows for fear of scaring children and even adults away. But today, with all of the suffering in this world, I wish I had better equipped my students of all ages with the skills needed to get through these tough times. If there is one thing our tradition does best, it is to cope with suffering. If Judaism hadn't developed these coping skills, it wouldn't still exist today. Most of us have experienced a few personal and communal tragedies in our lifetime, but I think few, if any of us, have ever previously experienced such a long-term communal crisis as the current pandemic. As a result, many of us may be struggling to cope with a crisis of this scale. 
That's where I believe Jewish tradition can be helpful. I'm thankful for the guidance that Jewish tradition gives for living a meaningful life in ordinary times, but I am especially grateful these days that Judaism has a built-in panic button. Thanks to our spiritual ancestors' resilience and incredible coping skills, we already have a spiritual plan in place for when things get tough. For example, let's start with the name of tonight's service, Kol Nidre. The opening prayer after which the service is named is all about responding to a crisis. Under Jewish law, vows are considered a very serious matter. Vows and other promises represent integrity and trust, which are the foundations of every relationship in society. Under ordinary circumstances, breaking a vow was thought to be one of the worst things that a person could do. After all, a person is only as good as their word. But we all know from history and recent experiences alike that sometimes things happen that are beyond our control. For example, we may have promised a friend last year that we would definitely attend their special event this fall, only to have the pandemic unexpectedly wipe out all of our plans. Or, during the Spanish Inquisition, our ancestors may have been forced to convert to Catholicism in order to avoid torture. Despite publicly vowing to practice the religion demanded by the Inquisitors, our ancestors knew in their hearts that they intended to remain Jews. For situations like these, we have the words of Kol Nidre. In this prayer, we ask to be released from vows made under duress or vows we found ourselves unable to fulfill due to an unexpected crisis. With these ancient Aramaic words, we reduce the expectations to which we hold ourselves to something more realistic and manageable in a time of crisis. And this is not the only example of where Jewish tradition has contingencies in place for a time of crisis. One of my favorite midrashim is about God advising Moses in a time of crisis. This midrash says that when the Israelites were fleeing from Pharaoh's army trapped at the edge of the sea, Moses cries out to God with a rather lengthy prayer. How does God respond to this prayer? God says, Moses, Bubala, my children are in trouble. The sea is blocking them on one side while their enemy pursues them on the other. Why are you standing here reciting long prayers? There is a time to lengthen prayer and a time to shorten it. Given the length of traditional prayer services, we might assume that God likes to hear beautiful extended prayers. But here God is saying to knock it off. This is a time of crisis known in Hebrew as a sha'at had chak. Stop acting like you're in a normal situation. Stop holding yourself to the same standards you normally hold yourself to. It's time to discard the extra fluff and focus on just the core of what needs to be done. In Moses' case, that meant abbreviating his prayer. But we see in the case of another Jewish prophet, in a time of moral crisis, the community needed to hear an abbreviated list of what really mattered. The traditional list of the 613 meets vote or commandments was too long for this pressing situation. So the prophet Micah reduced the core of Jewish practice to just three essential things. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Tonight, I want to explore these three ideas from Micah as spiritual guidance for our current crisis. First, let's start with the idea of walking humbly with God. Humility means recognizing our limitations rather than assuming that we can somehow reach perfection. This is not an easy thing to do if we have long felt the pressure to be perfect or at least perform at high levels in multiple areas of life. Many of us feel pressure to perform at work no matter what is going on in our lives outside of work. Those with partners, children, or ailing parents may also feel a lot of pressure to be loving and supportive to these family members, no matter how stressed we are at work. Then there's the pressure around our bodies and our appearances. It takes a lot of time and resources to keep ourselves healthy, let alone try and meet society's unrealistic expectations of beauty. Some people focus on perfection in one of these areas, while others feel pressure in all of these areas at the same time. While holding ourselves to these impossibly high standards, we know full well that we don't always or ever completely reach them. And we waste a lot of mental energy beating ourselves up for our perceived failures. That is in part why Yom Kippur comes every year. It's because God knows we will always make mistakes and we need a way to acknowledge these mistakes so that we can move forward and keep doing a little better each day. 
God does not expect us to be perfect this year or next year. Rather, God asks us through the prophet Micah to simply learn to be humble about our imperfections as human beings. Next, the prophet Micah tells us to love mercy. This is the same idea of humility and recognizing our humanity, but applied to other people rather than to ourselves. Those of us who hold ourselves to high expectations often hold other people in our lives to high expectations as well. We may expect our children to be quiet during a Zoom call or to focus on their distance learning no matter how sad or stressed they are. We might expect our friends or partners to magically intuit our thoughts and offer the exact type of support we need at the precise moment we need it. Or we might expect our coworkers to get things in before the deadline, no matter how much they are struggling with everything going on. But that doesn't always happen because other people are human like we are. And by virtue of being human, they are going to mess up even under ordinary circumstances. But now, during a Sha'at Hadchak, a time of crisis, the people around us are in extra need of mercy and compassion. On this Day of Atonement, we need to give them forgiveness for the times they have not met our expectations. We need to forgive them tomorrow and the next day too, because they are struggling to keep it together as much as we are. Lastly, and most importantly, the prophet Micah teaches us to act justly. Over the past seven months or so, as we have tried to navigate this long-term crisis as a society, we may have heard many people say that we are all in the same boat. And it's true that this crisis is affecting everybody. But perhaps a better metaphor to explain what's going on is not that we are in the same boat, but rather that we are all in the same storm. It's raining harder on some of us than on others. And some of us are in sturdier boats, while others are clinging onto driftwood as the storm-tossed waves keep hitting them one after the other. While this year has been very difficult for all of us in different ways, Tonight I'm thinking especially of the millions of people who are worrying each day about food and shelter. Earlier this month I learned that the food bank where I live in Chesterfield County went from serving 10,000 people before the pandemic hit in March to now 30,000 people each month. There are far too many children going days with nothing to eat. There are far too many families on the verge of losing their homes. If you are in this situation of crisis on top of crisis, I encourage you to reach out for help. There's no shame in seeking support during a time of crisis. And if you are lucky enough to still have a home and food at this moment, I encourage you to join me in following Micah's call for justice. It can be difficult to think clearly about anything during a time of crisis as stress leaves our brains feeling scattered. But during a time of crisis, it is even more important to think about other people who don't have the same resources that we have. And the prophet Micah teaches that it's not enough to just think about justice. We've got to take action in order to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. So let us reach out to the many people out there, Jews and non-Jews alike, who are wondering where their next meal will come from and when something good will finally happen to them. Let us join together to do what we can in this new year to end their suffering and to replace it with comfort justice and love and let us say amen good yantif <laughs> Oh,
your eyes are closed, you hear the sea is closer. With feverish fingers, rhythm is more clear. God, as if it were possible to say, is great. Today is in the past, not for the thundering in the heavens, but for the sobbing in the dell. For blessed is the man who heard the sobbing. You were destined to hear it. A tear fell in your spirit, and with wounds and with wonder, it blossomed into song. We are but sojourners in life. Every being walks in the valley of the shadow of death. May our life's journey bring us the wisdom to accept this common destiny with tranquility and peace. Reciting the Kaddish is a link with the past, but the Kaddish itself looks forward. We continue with the mourner's Kaddish and remember the following loved ones. Yit gada v'yit kadash shemei rabba v'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye d'cho v'et Yisrael v'agala uv'izman kari v'imru amen yehe shemei rabba mevarach le'olam olomei almaya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase v'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shemei d'kudisha b'richu Le'ela miko birchata v'shirata, tush b'chata v'nechemata, da amiran be'alma v'imru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya, v'chayim alinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mromam, hu ya'ase shalom, alinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn, and may we be a source of comfort for all who are bereaved, and let us say, Amen. This is a moment to pause and think upon the past year and recall vows between ourselves and God. This is a moment to recall and rethink our actions, those made in haste or under duress, and to think about the times when our conscience was ignored. It is time to think about complacency, prejudice, and false pride. Again. This, this is, is a hallowed moment. moment. In a united community with both friends and strangers, it is a time to recall and reaffirm the sanctity of life. We ask that the faults within us, the errors we have committed, the omissions we have allowed, be forgiven. We ask that we have the strength to forgive others, especially those we love. For all these, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, and grant us atonement. Our God and God of our ancestors, may your presence in our lives this new year renew our spirits and renew our strength. May it be a good year, may it be a sweet year. May you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. <laughs> 